Hello guys and welcome back to another M Critter tutorial. So it will be kind of like for block bench as well, but it will help you actually texture and um, get the understanding of how UV mapping and stuff works in block bench, which you can use for your models in M Critter. So it's more of a block bench tutorial, but it will also help you with uh, making your mods in M Critter. So uh, we're going to start with a the block. There's different ways of actually UVing uh, textures and stuff like that, as well as creating textures. Uh, generally, I suggest working with uh, like an editor for texture making, something that supports transparency, such as GIMP or uh, Paint.net. Uh, depending on your operating system, you'll probably have to choose one or the other. Uh, this is specifically for Windows, Paint.net. Uh, that's what I use. Uh, most people have Windows, so it should be fine. Um, but GIMP is supported for Linux and Mac, I think. So uh, depending on what textures and stuff you have, you'll be able to use something like a third-party editor to do that really fine detail work. Um, the paint program in here is okay, but it's not the greatest. It does limit the hue offsets uh, to a certain amount that it will only go to. So like every two notches it will kind of shift things so it's not exactly the best for custom customizability uh, but it, it does get the general idea done and stuff like that so let's uh, just create a block model we'll start with blocks uh, then I'll cover um, entities and uh, projectiles but blocks and items are very similar so we'll start with that one we'll just create a block thing you might have noticed that I went ahead and uh, went with a Java block slash item. Now this is for Forge and the Java edition. So make sure to choose that one when you're actually working with Forge. If you're working with uh, something like uh, Bedrock, then you'll have to do the Bedrock ones. Uh, modded entities are for uh, entities like projectiles and actual entities themselves in Forge. So make sure to use the modded entity or the block slash Java or Java block slash item uh, model. So we're working in the J Java block slash item. It says what format it is right up here. Uh, we want to give it a file name. So we're just going to basically say um, just test for now. It doesn't matter uh, because this is a tutorial, but you want it to not be the same for your other things that are in your mod already. Uh, best suggestion is just to make sure that all your models are in the same folder so you know that it doesn't like actually override or have the same name. Uh, well, Windows will tell you if you want to merge it and then you'll be able to know if it has the same name or not. All right, so we're going to confirm that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a cube. So this is just going to be to kind of demonstrate the texturing and stuff. And then we're going to actually add two of these because sometimes we need to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move this one over here and we'll just create like a, I don't know, a unique model just quickly we'll go maybe by an 8 by 8 and and go up about 8 and then we'll do the same for that actually we could just duplicate this and then we'll basically bring that over here all right so that's basically what our model is now you're probably wondering how do we actually UV map this now depending on how you want to actually texture this. Uh, if you want all of the sides for each one of these blocks to be the same, then you're going to probably need a larger image size. Uh, now, if you're working with something a certain size, like, um, like if you want to double the, like basically clone these two cubes to be the same texture, then you don't need to worry about it too much. You can also use different images for blocks and items to kind of double up on the textures which also save the I guess making a larger image but sometimes you might need to make a larger image if it's a certain type of material sometimes like uh, one of my mods that I'm working on uh, architecture plus uh, I'll eventually be adding in insulation and textures and stuff like that for the beams but I also have a beam texture so I've actually specified a beam um, texture thing and then when I actually add the insulation and stuff it'll be on a different um, texture map so it'll make it easier for me to actually develop 
So you might want to do that kind of method, but in some cases you might be able to just get away with making a large texture map, which is kind of goes into the UVing uh, of things. So if you want to actually uh, texture things on the same texture, what you're going to do is you're going to select the tech, the meshes that you want to actually uh, put in that map. So for this one, this is untextured, so is that one. So what we're going to do is if we want to add both of these to it, we would just shift or control and then click the other, the other mesh or cube. And then it's going to select it. You can kind of see that it's highlighted on both of them. If we right click on just one of them, it'll be kind of brighter on one. But if we click on both, then it'll be brighter on two. So once we've done that, what we can do is we can go over to here and we can just basically set texture. Now, the one thing with that is if you set the texture on here, it's only going to do that particular side that you're right clicking on. Uh, if you want to make sure that you actually get all the texture sides, then what you're going to want to do is uh, go control A and that's going to select all of the different tabs up here, which is your sides of your cubes. And then what you want to do is you want to right click and then go texture. And obviously we don't have a texture, so we're going to have to create one and we can also use a template so templates are fine you could also do blank there's different methods of doing it you could also import a texture if you already have one so again that's where the paint program comes in handy you can actually size the image to what you need and then you can kind of map it towards what you actually want so um again you could import the texture it needs to be a png so what we're going to do is we're just going to use a texture template and then we're just going to call it texture for the time being and we're just going to leave the rearrange uv and the power of two size so it basically gives us a proper map and it will kind of color things a certain direction of how it's going to actually react now if you wanted to make it a little bit more organized because this isn't really organized at all uh, what you can do is you can go into your uh, create a new texture again you just undo that and then you can basically disable the rearrange part and then you can create it and it will basically map it how it basically is now there's other methods that you can do um, I believe it's uh, box UV so you can basically enable this one and then you would basically get a box UV this is more organized where you could actually understand how the thing works. It's very similar to entity UV mapping. It will kind of rearrange it in a order based on the side. So this would be your north side. Um, this would be your west, east, and then south, and then your bottom and top. So that's a lot easier to actually understand than, say, working with, um, you know, actually texturing it. Now, once you've done that, you can click the little save icon down here. Or if you don't, have the save icon what you can do is you can actually save it right click on the texture and save it and then you can basically just save it to your desktop or wherever you have your files for your images and then you can basically go ahead and open that with your paint program depending on what one uh, will vary but basically I just open it up with that and then you can basically texture it how you want you basically just paint on it and then you can basically get that save it again and you don't actually even need to relaunch the application. If you go back into it, you can kind of see it already updated the texture. So that's basically how the texturing works for blocks and items. Uh, very similar. This one is very similar to how entities work. So let's take a quick look at how mapping entities work in Blockbench. So we're going to go with a new project. And then we're going to go with a modded entity. We're going to give it a um, file name and model identifier name. So I might as well cover uh, this quickly in this video, but uh, your file name is basically what your actual um, file name is going to be for your model itself. Now it will probably say modded whatever entity that you have. Now that's completely normal. It's not going to be visible. 
uh, for people to see. It's just uh, what your file is called, so that's fine. Um, your model identifier uh, should be something unique where it doesn't have the same name or, or ID. Think it as a namespace for your mod. Um, this is a specific file name or ident ID for your actually entity, so this should be different than anything else in your mod. Um, again, that's why you probably want to keep your file name and your model identifier name the same. Um, again, these letters have to be lowercase and um, you can use underscores and numbers, I think, as well. But uh, generally, it has to be the English language, like English characters, or it will probably run into errors. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call it test. And then we're going to call this test as well. Now, normally, you you would want to call it something better, but uh, now there's uh, the export version. This is basically where you're going to select your different um, maps and stuff like that for the version. If you're working on something like um, 1.7 to 1.13, then you're going to probably choose this one here. Uh, 1.14 is this one, MCP. So MCP up until um, the one. 15 point or 1.15 and 1.16 you'll need the MCP for that but when you get into 1.17 and up so what you're going to need is Moj maps so, so basically Moj maps is the new actual formatting for the export version is completely different format so depending on what version you're going to either need MCP or this top one for the 1.12 or you're going to need Moj maps for the 1.17, 1.18, or 1.19 in whatever version until it actually comes out with another option down here. So we're just gonna use 1.17 for this tutorial. It won't matter, it's just a texturing tutorial. And basically what you would end up doing is you would create your model um, mesh. You would make sure that your bones and everything are set up how you like them. Uh, bones are basically the pivot points, so you would want to make sure that they're relatively correct on the size so you might want to do something like that uh, this little access point right here basically indicates where the um, pivot point is if we actually move this you can kind of see that it rotates with the pivot point so if we move it up and maybe this could be like a leg or something like that you would see it kind of walk like this and uh, yeah that's basically how it is so again if you wanted to actually map it this is basically what you're going to look like for your map and you would either import a texture or you can basically create one for entities it's actually easier to create one and uh, i would leave all these different sizes like it is so it's easier to um, actually map it i don't usually have I use this as a template generator and then I basically go into like my paint program and stuff like that and then edit it and then throw it back into the application uh, just so it makes it look a little bit better. So what you can do is you can just create new te template and then it will automatically UV everything. You don't have to worry about the sides with the entities because it generally doesn't um, have any issues. Now if you're making a projectile it's the same exact method. I believe the top of the actual projectile or the the direction that it's facing is actually down where the back end of the thing so if you're creating like a bullet or whatever this the white part would probably be the bottom and this would be the top so it's kind of like a reversed entity texture so just keep that in mind when you're actually texturing it you'll have to play around with it and kind of test it in the game and stuff like that but i'm pretty sure it's the facing downwards for projectiles it's the same exact workspace so basically what you would do is you create a um, modded entity and it would still count as a actual projectile so you just export it and again saving you can actually save it as well and it will save the texture for you and you can end it edit it in uh, your paint program throw it back in here and it will basically update as you wish. So basically that uh, covers the texturing and stuff like that. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense how the texturing and stuff works. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.